In the previous video, I showed you records within events table, but I didn't tell you how I got to that point. In this video, I am going to show you how you can select records from a table so that you can see what data is coming across. In order to pull the data from any table, you need a select statement. The syntax for select statement is select followed by the name of the column where you want to pull the data from and then from the table name. In order to pull the data from multiple columns, you will have the column names separated by a comma in your select statement and then from table name. In order to select the data from all the columns, rather than listing all the column names separated by comma, you can simply put a star. The syntax is the same. Select list of columns, then from, and the table name. Now I'm going to go to BigQuery and show you how you can construct this statement there and pull the required data. Here I am in BigQuery. Here's the project that I'm going to use for writing our first SQL statement. This SQL statement will allow us to look at the data in a particular table. So click on your project. Within your project, you'll see all your data sets. I only have one data set here, and that is the data that's coming from Google Analytics 4 into BigQuery. Expand the data set, and here are my tables listed. These are the daily tables, and then there is an intraday table. To query any of these tables, click on that table, and when you click on that table, you'll see certain options become available here. One of these options is query table. Clicking on the query table option will write a SQL statement for you. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this query table option. And here is the skeleton of the SQL statement that's required to pull the data. This statement is not complete yet. As you'll remember from just a few minutes ago, this has a select statement and then from table name, but it is missing a list of columns that you want to select the data from. And it also introduces limit followed by a number. For now, I am going to remove this statement and we'll come back to it in a few minutes. Before I go ahead and fix this SQL statement, I want to draw your attention to the two icons that appeared on the screen. Whenever your SQL statement has a problem, you will see these notices from BigQuery that tells you something is wrong. Hovering over this icon will show you the error message. As it says here, select list must not be empty. And this is exactly what I said earlier, that this statement is not complete. It is missing a list of columns. Similarly, hovering over this, it asks you to open the validator, click on it, and the same message appears. Click on this icon again, and the message goes away. So now let's go ahead and add the list of columns. First, I'm going to add one column, then I'm going to add multiple columns, and then we will finally select all the columns so that you can see all three different statements. Let's assume that we want to look at all the event names from this table. So first thing is to find the name of that column or the field from this table and type that in here. So looking at this table right here, field name is called event underscore name. So that's what we have to type in to get the list of all the events from this table. So let's go ahead and type that. Keep in mind, SQL is case insensitive. So it doesn't matter whether I'm typing this in lowercase or uppercase, either will work. As soon as you add the column name to this statement, this statement is now valid and hence the error messages are gone. Once the statement is complete, BigQuery will show you how much data will be processed to run this query. Since BigQuery charges by the amount of data it processes, this number becomes critical. For smaller sites, this might not be a problem. However, if you have a large site that sends a lot of data to BigQuery and you are running SQL statements like this, Pay attention to this number and make sure you're not exceeding your spending limits. There are ways to limit the amount of data that will be processed. And I will show you those as we progress through this course. Once the statement is ready, 
clicking on run will show you the results. The results will appear in this area. So click on run and here are the results. It is showing the event name for every single row in this table. And that's what we asked here. Select the event name, which is the field name or the column name from table name. Now, if you want to add other columns to this list, then you can add them right here, separated by comma. So let's say we want to add two more columns to this. I'm gonna go to the table to see which two columns I want to pick. The more familiar you are with the names of the fields or columns, the faster you will be able to construct these queries. But if you are not familiar with what fields or columns exist in a particular table, you can always click on that table and find out the names of the fields or columns. Let's say I want to also pick event date and event timestamp. In that case, I can add them to this list. It doesn't matter which order I add them in. Whatever order I enter here is the order that will appear in my result set. So let's say if I put in comma event date and event timestamp. Now I've got three columns that I'm pulling from this table. Again, you'll notice this number has changed. Go ahead and click on run and here is the result. Event name, event date, and event timestamp. Now let's assume you want to scan the entire table. You want to see all the columns that are in this table. Remember, that's what I showed you in the previous video. In that case, entering each and every column is going to be a tedious job. Instead of entering each and every column, you can simply enter star. Star means all the columns from this table. So select star from and the table name. As you'll notice here, now you are processing a lot more data. So as you create these queries, the more columns you select and larger your table is, the more data will be processed for BigQuery to run your statement. So once the statement is ready, Click on run and here you can see all the columns. I'm going to make this window a bit bigger. You can do that by hovering over this divider and pulling it up while your mouse is down. So here you have it. You can see various rows as you scroll down, up and across to see all the columns. Now I'm gonna make it smaller again. Remember I removed a limit statement that was initially created for you by BigQuery when you press the button to create a new query. That limit statement allows you to limit the number of records that will be returned in this result set. This table is not large enough. It only has 19 rows. But if your table is large, let's say you have millions of records, you don't want to run a query to pull all the data to see what columns are there, what values are there. In that scenario, if you just want to sample your table, you can put a limit statement. So how that limit statement works is, you type in limit and then enter a number to specify the number of rows that you want to return from that table. By default, BigQuery says 1000. In this scenario, that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna limit it to two, just to show you how this works. Once you put that, go ahead and click on run. And now when you look at your result set, you will only see two records because we specified the limit as two. So that's how the limit function works. It limits the number of records that will be returned from your result set. That's all about constructing the select statement. Keep in mind the syntax, select column name or names and star for all the columns. Then you have the word from and then specify the table name. If you want to limit the number of records, then put limit and then the number of records that you want to return from the result set. Become familiar with this syntax because this is the most commonly used 
syntax in SQL. You will be constructing a lot of queries that will start from this basic statement. So go ahead and try it on your own data.